imagine for a moment that this is the day you pick up your new car. It's the right size with enough cargo space for everything you want to do. The miles per gallon are terrific. You love the way it handles and the acceleration. Wow! You even like the color. You're excited and pleased with your choice and this is just the car you wanted and you got it at the right price. Halfway home, you push the button to turn on the radio, but nothing happens. More button pushing. Still nothing. Now you notice it's getting warm, so you turn on the air conditioner, but it doesn't work either. You put the windows down, but the passenger window won't budge. So how are you feeling now? Some basic expectations you had for the new car were not met. These weren't extraordinary expectations, just things that are expected from any new car. In fact, these things that don't work are not the things that motivated you to buy the car. When the windows go up and down when you press the button, you don't get a feeling of satisfaction. You just expect it. But when they don't work, it leaves you feeling dissatisfied. The things that motivated you to buy the car are different from the things that make you dissatisfied with the car. That's exactly what Frederick Herzberg discovered about our jobs. The things that satisfy and motivate us are different than the things that dissatisfy us. Back in the 1950s and 60s, Herzberg conducted a number of experiments with nearly 1,700 workers from all walks of life. He asked them what job events had occurred in their work that led to extreme satisfaction or extreme dissatisfaction on their part. The shocking thing that Herzberg learned was that the things that caused job satisfaction and the things that led to job dissatisfaction are not the same things. He called the things that led to job satisfaction motivator factors. They include achievement, recognition, the work itself, responsibility, and growth or achievement. The things that led to dissatisfaction he called hygiene factors. They include company policy, supervision, interpersonal relationships, working conditions, salary status, and security. It's just like your experience with your new car. Different things delighted and motivated you to buy the car, but entirely different things bummed you out. Here's the important part. Even if all the hygiene factors are not dissatisfying, that doesn't mean the employee experiences job satisfaction. It just means they aren't annoyed by the way the company does things. Taking care of the dissatisfiers just gets us to the starting line. The hygiene factors don't motivate. The things that cause job satisfaction and provide intrinsic motivation are on the other list. Okay, so what? What does this mean to you? Well, one of the things it means is that when you're looking for a job, a job where you can thrive, look for work that you enjoy. You will feel far more engaged and satisfied if you enjoy your work, regardless of the pay and benefits. In other words, the motivation to do the work is intrinsic or internal because you enjoy the work itself. Herzberg's theory would also say that if you take a job for the salary or benefits, you probably will be unhappy in your work before long. That's because compensation is a dissatisfier. Here's one way that works. Do you remember what it felt like to get a raise? Pretty great, right? How long did that feeling last? Probably not until you got your next paycheck. But how long does the dissatisfaction last if you discover that someone else doing your job is paid a lot more money? It stays with you like having a pebble in your shoe. But here's another reason Herzberg's discovery should matter to you. Someday you may have several people reporting to you, and at some point you will wonder, how do I motivate these people? It may be tempting to offer bonuses, high status in the organization, or a special parking spot, but Herzberg would predict that these carrots will only motivate your people as long as there are more and more and more carrots. His theory predicts that the best way to motivate people is to match people to the jobs that call for their natural talents. 
the things they enjoy doing most. For example, don't assign a big picture thinker to a job requiring exacting detail. Find someone who loves the details. So how do you find someone who loves doing what you need to have done? Well, that's the subject of a different video.